Yeah, money gang and we do not stop, nigga. Uh, cash and clock, banging for bread. What up, YouTube family? We back at it again with another dope documentary, and this one means a lot to me. So before we start this, I just want to shout out the mother of the rapper this documentary is about, Mama Cash, aka Choi Castaneda, for allowing me to do this and helping me with the documentary. Before I did anything, I definitely made sure I got her blessings. This is going to be the first official Johnny Cash documentary. So I'm going to be the first to do it. And I'm the first to get the real full story. So let's do this. Also, I want to shout out Yuckmouth for making a video watching and reviewing my Pretty Black documentary. That was so dope to me, I couldn't believe it. Yuckmouth from the Loonies, Mr. I Got 5 on it himself, watched my video live on his YouTube channel with all his supporters and even called my documentary deep on my platform i want to speak about all the rappers from different regions whether if they're big in the industry or just independent artists i brought you all the six and pretty black documentary and i was the first to do that on youtube and i just want to be able to talk about some of my favorite artists dead or alive no matter if they're really known or not i was happy to do the pretty black documentary he passed away 15 years ago and I didn't think the video was going to get much viewers because a lot of people forgot about him. But I definitely brought him back in 2024 and the documentary is doing big numbers. So since I've been doing these documentaries with these forgotten rappers, I wanted to do it again. Rappers have the most dangerous profession. A 2015 study found jazz and blues singers have the longest lifespans into their 60s. While male rap artists have the shortest life expectancy which is under 30 years old. When it comes to cause of death, more than 50% of deaths of rap artists were due to homicides, compared to under 6% for metal, country, blues, and jazz artists. Many rap artists come from the most impoverished, under-resourced, and dangerous urban communities. Rappers mostly die over street beefs, robberies gone bad, or drug overdoses. But there's also a group of rappers who have been killed over straight jealousy and hate. Jealousy and hate is going to be the reason this rapper this story is about reaches demise at an early age and until this day it remains a big question mark. Today we're going to Northern Cali with it in a city called Richmond, California aka The Rich. This Bay Area legend was making a lot of noise in the early 2000s before his untimely demise in 2007. This rapper's rap name was Johnny Cash the Fast Gunner aka Dollar. Johnny Cash was born in Oakland, California at the Oak Knoll Hospital August 11, 1981 to the parents of Johnny Castaneda Sr. as his father and Choi Castaneda as his mother. Johnny Cash's father was Mexican and his mother is African American. So that makes Johnny Cash half Latino and half black. His father was from Oakland and Richmond, California and his mother was from New Orleans but moved to the Bay Area at age 4. They both met in high school and fell in love becoming high school sweethearts. They would later both get married, and in 1981, Johnny Cash was born, real name Johnny Castaneda Jr. Three years after, his younger brother was born, being his only sibling. As a kid, Johnny Cash wasn't too much of a troublemaker. He did what most boys did at an early age, and he did very well in school, always graduating with A's. Even at a young age, little Johnny Cash would have haters over his good looks and being naturally cool. Other boys would think he was just a pretty boy and he would find himself having to stick up for himself and even sometimes getting into fights to prove himself at an early age. He wasn't perfect but never got himself landed in jail for anything serious, instead Johnny Cash would focus on sports. He played baseball, basketball and football. He was a quarterback in football and also got a lot of trophies growing up. As a kid, Johnny Cash was always a leader, a people's person and very funny. He also lived in Germany for four years as a child because his father was in the military. But most of his life, Johnny Cash was raised in Richmond, California in the hilltop area where it's more safer rather than the north, south, and central Richmond, the hoods of the city. Johnny Cash came from a loving family having both parents all the way up to eight years old. After his father got out of the military, he got a job working on computers 
but he was also hustling dope on the side on a larger scale. He definitely wasn't no small timer and in 1989 he was set up and murdered by someone he did business with at a Vallejo gas station. This would be really hard on Johnny Cash and his mother. Johnny Cash's mother would never remarry again and continue raising her children all by herself with help from the kids grandparents. At around age 10 Johnny Cash started doing music and began rapping. His rap name at the time was Jay Money and he even had his own manager but that wouldn't last too long and he would end up getting managed by his own uncle the brother of his mother. As a kid growing up he was always neutral and had friends from all over Richmond. He even played sports with the people that would later become the ops to the hood he repped which was called the Nolia. The hood near 3rd and Silver Avenue on the north side of the city. When it's beef in the streets you can never play both sides. It always comes to a time where you need to pick a side. Around the 10th grade Johnny Cash would start going to the Nolia in North Richmond to hang with his friends. Even though he wasn't raised there he would still pick sides from the ongoing beef in his city. Johnny Cash was a part of a rap group called No Sense in the late 1990s which didn't last too long so Johnny Cash of YS started the Hood Fellas with Pete Eruption in 2001. In 2001, Jacker from the legendary Bay Area group Mob Figures dropped his first solo album that was self-titled. That album featured the Hood Fellas on a track called Life. This was a big deal for Johnny Cash because the album did really good on sales and the legendary rapper Jacker was coming up himself as a big name from the Bay Area. In 2002, the Hood Fellas dropped their debut album from grinding to shining, this was a big move for the trio and it showed that Johnny Cash was the star of the group. Sometime in between all this Johnny Cash would become a first time father when his son was born at around age 20. Around this time it was getting really bad in Richmond with the murder rate. This would be all over the gang wars between North, South and Central Richmond. Later on Johnny Cash scored a deal with Big 3 Records. They gave him a budget and a rap truck to promote his music. He stayed traveling to places like LA and New York trying to further his rap career. Legendary songwriter and producer Babyface flew Johnny Cash to New York for a possible record deal with Big 3 Records and Yab Young Records but the deal fell apart due to a split up with the labels. This was a major blow to Johnny Cash but while in New York he still made some music in Babyface's studio and Jamie Foxx's studio. Johnny Cash was a different type of hood dude. He wasn't your everyday hood rapper, he had a good head on his shoulders and was really smart. He even graduated high school. He never really got into the streets too hard, he was always just a pure rapper at heart and with the streets behind him. But it wasn't easy for Cash, being a part of a hood comes with a lot of obstacles. One time he was at the Hilltop Mall and got into a big fight at the clothing store. Cash even lost two close friends to the streets to gun violence. It was definitely hard being a rapper and having beef in the streets at the same time. North Richmond was beefing with the whole city but Cash would just stay focused with his rap career. At the time Mac Dre from Vallejo was the biggest thing in Northern California's rap scene. Mac Dre was trying to build his record label Thiz Entertainment to the top. Mac Dre was messing with Ryder J Clyde heavy at the time and since Mac Dre was looking for the hottest rappers in Northern California, Ryder would tell him about Johnny Cash and plays music to Dre. Rada J. Clyde was trying to get cash on the team. At the end of October 2004, Mac Dre and Thiz Nation was leaving to Kansas City for a few days to do a few shows and make money for the whole team. Rada J. Clyde told Cash that once they come back, he will introduce him to Mac Dre. Mac Dre and Thiz Nation went to Kansas City, but things went left on Halloween night with a janky promoter named Damon Whitmill got angry with Mac Dre and paid a couple shooters to unalive Mac Dre while he was sleeping in the back of a van that was traveling on a freeway. So Johnny Cash never got the opportunity to meet Mac Dre. But Rada J. Clyde started doing music with Cash and that's when they started growing a bond. They formed the group duo Money Gang and dropped a classic album called Bang For Bread under Thiz Entertainment in April 2005. This album had a couple hits like Step Step and Bang For Bread. So good, so money ganged out. Money bags in the trunk, let the money hang out. Honey hang out with a sweet cop in the top bottle. No, get the trees in the Bacardi jump. There ain't no punk shit. We bangin' for the cheese. If you ain't riding the beef, you ain't hangin' with me. Most people think Johnny Cash was signed to this entertainment, but Cash remained an independent artist. He was just running around with the camp, dropping albums and repping this, but never did he sign his name to the label, which was a smart move on his part. 
Johnny Cash appeared on Mac Dre's DVD Chill TV 2 and showed the world on a larger scale his talent. After Chill TV 2 dropped, it definitely boosted Cash's rap career. He definitely shined hard in that DVD with showing him perform classic hits with This Nation. This Entertainment dropped This Nation of Volume 11 that was a solo Cash album. This also had classics like Midnight in the Bay featuring Mac Maul and Bavgate and I'm Gangsta featuring Ryder J. Clyde and Jay Diggs. I'ma ride till my ride is over. Ain't gotta go down south to find a know ya. I'ma dip with the heat cock, the 45 inch. Fast shoot, fast gun, it's whatever though. See this 10 mm, I'ma let it go. Hey, I know you wanna f this me. Right after that album, back to back, Johnny Cash would come to shine again. This dropped this Nation Volume 12 as a Money Gang album, with hits like Hustlin' featuring Keek the Sneak and Let's Toast that was originally featured on Andre Nicotina's Million Dollar Dream and Thiz Entertainment's album Green Eyes Dose. In the time I couldn't get my grit down without my get down. Posted on the track, Sunny Roaches used to act funny. Now they wanna sit in my sh buck, buck, get down when the clip spray. Got me reaching in my waist for the hip play. Johnny Fast gonna make it rain and thunder. What? Johnny Cash was on top of his game. He was really the starting five of Thiz Nation. He was featured on every Thiz Nation album and on everyone's project from Thiz. It really seemed at the time that everything was going his way and could possibly be the next big thing out of the bay. Johnny Cash had true stardom from the bars to the looks. But behind that successful rap career, there was still street politics happening in the bay. He was still around piranhas and he was doing whatever to make it and possibly move away from the bay area. One night things went all bad when Cash was driving in San Pablo. As he was driving, minding his own business, someone would start shooting at him, hitting his car, and luckily not striking Cash. He was able to dodge them bullets and escape the area. It was definitely an attempt on his life, and he would even speak about it on a This Block Report DVD. What the business is, this is your boy Cash the Fast Gunner. This is how we do it out here in North Richmond, right here on 3rd and Silver. It's trill around this neighborhood, man. This is North Richmond. As you can see, I got the squad with me. Ain't nothing but young hitters, hustlers, and gangsters and pimps in this crowd. We don't f no suckers, no suck ass. If you ain't from out here, you boosie, straight up, man. 25 hours of the day, we trying to get some money. Whether it's sending a b whether it's hustling, rapping. Coming from out here, it's like it make you want to go straight to the top with this rap sh You feel me? It make you want to go straight to the top and get up out of this sh do something positive, get some rap money, some legal money without having to deal with all that bullshit, all that other sh You just out here, man, you know, it's just get it how you live out here. You feel me? You know, another thing I want to tell y'all about North Richmond, everything just like it ain't always sweet out here. You feel me? Like, and all them niggas bucking them shots at all my cars and shit, I know y'all niggas. I'm telling you, you niggas gonna be next on one of these shirts, man. Man, you gotta be strong, real strong and solid to survive out here. If you ain't, you weak, you gonna break, you ain't gonna make it out here. This shit is tough. There's a lot of vultures, everybody wanna eat, we all trying to have something. Cash didn't have no personal beef with anyone. He wasn't really the type to have beef on the streets and have enemies after him. So it was strange that he was getting shot at. It was either a big hater that was just jealous or it could have been someone from the opposite side. After the shooting, Cash would throw shots at the shooters on the This Block Report DVD. Cash's mother even told him she didn't think that was a good idea after Cash would show her his part on the This Block Report DVD. That definitely wasn't a smart idea because it could have been looked at as a threat when he told them he knows who they are and that they will end up on a shirt. That was a popular DVD especially in Northern California. The DVD was even on YouTube, so chances were that the shooter seen it. After that, Cash would start getting phone calls with someone threatening his life. They would call his phone private, talking greasy on the phone. Who could have been hating on Cash that bad? They definitely was hating on Cash and they took it personal. For someone who never really got into beefs or started any issues, just all of a sudden started getting shot at and having people call his phone threatening him just doesn't sound right. Cash was trying to change his life for the better, they definitely were just some straight jealous haters. Cash lived with a family member in Vallejo, but then he would move and live with a female in some ratchet hood apartments called Sereno Village in Vallejo. Cash's mother would always tell him, never lay your head where folks know where you be at, never let everybody know where you live. But Cash didn't take the wise advice. 
The people that were calling Cash threatening him also told him not to go to the Sereno Village Apartments, the apartments where he was staying at with the female. They were for sure watching him and knew he would be at these apartments. Strange to say, this female Cash was living with was cousins to rapper Mac Dre. Her mother is Mac Dre's mom's Mac Wanda's sister. This was a big coincidence since Cash was a part of this entertainment. Cash was on top of his game at the time. He was just waiting for his time so he can get away on his own. At this time, Cash Rada J. Clyde dropped a fire mixtape that did very well in sales. He also continued to be on almost every project Diz Entertainment dropped. Things were looking really positive for Cash, but this is where the story turns tragic. By this time, he stayed at the Sereno Village Apartments for about 6 months. On the morning of March 29, 2007, at about 10 a.m. in the morning, Cash was taking out his girlfriend to breakfast. While they were leaving the apartments, a couple guys walked up acting like fans outside of the building and asked if he was Johnny Cash. One of the men asked Cash if he could use his cell phone and Cash refused to let him use it. This would start a fight between Cash and the man. All of a sudden, one of the men pulled out a gun and shot Johnny Cash about four times. One of the shots that was most effective was to the head. The two suspects ran to a white vehicle that was waiting for them and sped off. The suspects didn't take none of Cash's jewelry or money which showed that they had all this planned just to unalive Cash. Cash usually carried a firearm for his protection but he left it in the car. While Johnny Cash was fighting for his life, a man rushed to him and held him until the helicopter came and took Cash to John Wire Hospital. Johnny Cash was being very strong fighting for his life while doctors performed surgeries. But sadly the doctors couldn't stop the bleeding. Johnny Cash succumbed to his injuries and passed away at around 5 p.m. Obviously he was, he was, you know, shot. And you know, when stuff like that happens, you know, sometimes rumors can spread and it's a lot of different information, misinformation, etc. But what can you say about the situation, what you know took place? What I know took place was Ford walked up to him coming out of an uh, uh, out of a Leo apartment was talking to him like you know Johnny Cash and he was like yeah and um, you know acting like they fans or something I guess and then next thing you know that transpired out there but I don't understand it because it was people around that you know can um, do some talking but you know how the streets are. Definitely some hater shit, so I don't know. You'll never be them. I mean, you could hate on them, and you could want what people have, but you'll never be that person. So when you say something like um, they approached him and act like they were fans, do you feel like this situation transpired because he was an artist, or you think it was like deeper than that? I think it was deeper than that. Well, I think, you know, our, our artists had something to do with it because you know people hate on people that they feel like it's gonna um, be better than them at something or are better than them at something you know what I mean and um, they don't want to see that happen Johnny didn't he wasn't a, I, I tell you one thing he wasn't a um, he not gonna fuck with him cause he, gonna, he not just gonna allow nobody to just do that to him you know he ain't no softy he was never that but he didn't go after people to just want to hurt somebody you know what I mean like like he said you could, we could eat off the same plate you can hate me all you want to just leave me the fuck alone. and that's the type of person he always been so after that pass and everything you know what I mean the Diz Nation brand Diz started Diz Nation come together then you uh you get the shit popping with the money gang with the homie Johnny Cash Johnny Dollar motherfucker how that, how that come Ghana. how that come well um Cash and Pete now, YS, they had a group. It was a group called the Hood Fellas. And I think they managed her. It was some way, somehow, they came in contact with Jack and, and Hustler and the rest of the guys. And um, I think it was through the manager, through Corey. The Hood Fellas and the Mob Figures, they would, did an album called The Camp Mob Figures. Cash was on that because he was in the group the Hood Fellas. And um, that's how I first met him. But I hadn't seen him in probably a couple years. And when I did run into him, that's when I was over there at, at Thieves. 
And I was like, I was telling you, Dre was telling me his plans of how he wanted to get some of the top and the best rappers in the Bay. And he wanted, you know, he wanted to be the head of the shit. And I used to always be telling him about Cash, playing the kind of mob figure songs and shit. He never met Cash and shit, though. But I used to be playing the shit. And I remember I was staying in Richmond. And I was trying to get a, uh, the, 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 the Jaguar. I was trying to get a car. But anyway, I run into Cash. I ain't seen him since probably a couple years since the Camp Mile figure shit. And he was going to the car lot and ran into him. And I was telling him, I was on my way to Kansas City. We finna go to Kansas City in probably a week or two. The nigga Dre, you know, I'm over there at this. The nigga Dre looking for some, for some orders and this and that. And um, I'm gonna introduce you to him when we get back. And that's when we end up going to Kansas City, and that's when that shit happened. But when I did get back in town, I tapped back in on my and um, kind of brought him to the studio because I had the keys to the studio Dre had up in West Oakland at that time. After Dre passed, I had all access to the studio, so I used to bring Cash to that with me. Him and this, and we was really, he really was just gonna do a few features on my. We just start with each other on a day to day basis. And just end up. He was just like, man, we might as well do an album. We're going to call it Money Gang. And that's, that's what we end up doing. How was that, you know, recording that first thing? Because that's on Thiz without Dre. So what was the feel of that album? I feel like he was, he, he was doing what you were supposed to do. Me, for one, because I already knew what his plans was. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure if Dre would have still been, you know, if we'd have came back to Kansas City together and I had got the chance to introduce Cass to Dre, he would have been over there anyway. So I just felt like I was doing what was meant to be did. We bonded, bro. Like that was like that was my like my little brother, bro. The shit Dre used to do with me and tell me and shit, I used to be spilling it on him. You know what I'm saying? You remember where you was at when he passed? Yep. At the house. I had y'all had just bring me a five big big ass five bedroom house out in the cuts <laughs> and I remember I woke up I had like 33 missed calls and I remember that first motherfucker called back told me like man you ain't heard no, I heard what and I, was like, I got cash I said this morning and I was like man this shit getting out of hand this is where things become a sticky situation as police do their investigation work, so did Cash's mother. The girlfriend of Cash said that they were sitting in Cash's bins ready to leave and the CD player had jammed. So Cash popped the trunk and hopped out his bins to fix the CD player's issue and she heard something like firecrackers go off. But then realized Cash had gotten shot. My question is, how does someone mistake gunshots as firecrackers in some active apartments? Nothing happened to her at all and she told Cash's mom she didn't see anything because she was sitting in the car and she just remembers that one of the suspects had gold tip dreads. But what's strange was that the manager of the apartment seen what happened and said that the girl was nowhere near the car at the time of the shooting. The manager also said they seen the girlfriend run from behind the building. Cash's mother would keep asking the girlfriend for the truth but she would say the same thing over and over. Cash's mother would never believe her words, especially after finding out that she was lying after talking to the manager of the apartments. The manager told Cash's mother the truth of what happened, but didn't see the suspect's face. But the manager knew that the suspects were both black. Rumors would start spreading that the girlfriend may have played a part in the murder of Johnny Cash. That's the story I heard about when all this first happened. I remember reading on MySpace that the girlfriend may have backdoored Cash. After talking to Cash's mother, it really makes me believe that she knows more of what happened that day. Even Cash's friends aren't too fond of her either, and until this day, she's still in Vallejo, still sticking to the same story. After the murder of Johnny Cash, police would arrest a man by the name of Major Eberhardt aka Mac Mage for the murder, but after investigation, they didn't charge him. Supposedly, Mac Mage stayed at the Sereno Village Apartments and one time he had gotten into it with Johnny Cash at the apartments. People blamed Mac Mage for shooting Johnny Cash. The police interviewed Mac Mage, but
but never charged him for the murder on cash. Supposedly, they didn't have enough evidence to even charge him. He was also arrested for a couple homicides and robberies years prior. Not too sure what the outcome for those charges were, but I heard he beat the murder charges, but I'm not too sure. He was also seen on Filthy Rich's music video before. Fast forward to nowadays, Johnny Cash's murder is still a cold case that was never solved. Will the truth ever come out? It's been close to 17 years since it happened and his mother still hasn't gotten answers. She's still to this day looking for the truth. What do y'all think? Did this girl that's Mac Dre's blood cousin backdoor Johnny Cash and got away with it? Did this man named Mac Mage murder Cash? Or is the truth something we will never get? Even though Johnny Cash wasn't the type of person to have beef in the streets, maybe his murder was really over jealousy and hate. Or was it simply over the fact that he was from the north side and just having affiliations got him unalived? It's been close to 17 years and it seems as if the world forgot about Cash. Life goes on and his family are stuck with no answers. Johnny Cash is just another murder victim that's forgotten. I'm doing this documentary for Johnny Cash and his family so we all can remember who he was and not celebrate his death but his life. Fast forward to nowadays, Cash's uncle still has a lot of his music in the vault and his mother still drops his music till this day. Cash's plans before his death were to leave this entertainment and start his own label. We weren't able to see the rest of his greatness but I could just imagine how dope that would have been. Like do you think people forgot about him? A lot of people, I think, they did. Talk to me, man. Like, the first few years, like, you know, people be buying their shirts. Hype, yeah. Rest <laughs> peace. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it'd be so hyped up. And then it's now, it's like, it's only a me and a couple of other people that keep their memories alive that still um, reach out to their parents. Or, you get what I'm saying? So people hype it up for a minute. And then all of a sudden, it's like, they, it, it fades back. Like, it fades back, so... It's crazy because um, I know people would, would, if he was alive, it'd be a lot of bandwagons. Oh, yeah. A lot of different stuff. A lot of, different. Uh, yeah, big different. difference. Big difference. Shout out to Cash's mother, Mama Cash, for allowing me to do this. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for her. So that's the end of that story. Rest in peace, Johnny Castaneda. Let me know who y'all want me to do next. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 50k subscribers by next month. Thank you to all my supporters. I have so much dope content on the way. So be on the lookout. Follow me on Instagram to see what I'm coming out with next. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. And until next time, I'm out. To the top with this rap. You feel me? It make you want to go straight to the top and get up out of this shit. Do something positive. Get some rap money. Do what your name be Money gang in the building. We sitting here doing an autograph thing, man. And anybody out there looking at us, man, we need some extra slash money handlers. You know? What the business is, this is your boy Cash the Fast Gunner. This is how we do it out here in North Richmond, right here on Third and Silver. Boy, look, that's my word. And underneath my teeth, that's my bird. 50 cow out, get busy with a big kick. Look up, look up. Be a dizzy. I'm See, ain't dollar sign, man. Dollar bills, y'all. Y'all gonna feel me, though. I promise y'all that.